According to my research, all the evidence shows, overwhelming evidence shows that at least absolute majority of Maidan protesters and all police members were killed by Maidan snipers. Or snipers located in Maidan control locations like Hotel Ukraina and Music Conservatory. And uh, this evidence includes uh, testimonies, even of uh, testimonies of uh, protesters who were wounded on the Maidan. The absolute majority of them testified during Maidan massacre trial that they were shot not by the police in front of them on the ground uh, or by government snipers in front of them. They were shot from the back and from the side in the Hotel Ukraina and other Maidan control locations which were controlled by Svoboda Party, far right Svoboda Party. And, uh, and also they were, uh, policemen also were shot from uh, such locations. Hello, everybody. This is Pascal from Neutrality Studies, and I'm joined by my co-host, Lasha Kasaratze, who is a Georgian IR analyst in the US. Our guest today is, for the second time, Dr. Ivan Kachanovsky. Professor Kachanovsky is a Ukrainian-Canadian political scientist at the University of Ottawa, who researched in detail the 2014 Maidan massacre, during which over 100 people died in Ukraine. He has been publishing scientific articles on the topic for years, but now he's just come out with a new book in which he includes all the details from his various in-depth studies. The book is entitled The Maidan Massacre in Ukraine, The Mass Killing That Changed the World. And let me tell you that it's not only a brilliant book and one that should be read by everyone, frankly, but that Dr. Kachanovsky is also making it open access. So he's doing fundraising for it. If you like what he is doing and want to support his research and his work, please go to gofund.me and donate to his project. The link will be in the description of this video. Dr. Kachadovsky, welcome. Uh, thank you for the invitation. It is a great uh, pleasure to be uh, host, um, uh, guest of your show, a uh, very interesting show. Thank you very much for the kind words. And it's a great honor to have you because you are the world's number one expert on what happened on the Maidan. You looked at video footage. You looked at uh, at the what people who were there said, the witness reports. You looked at the judicial uh, proceedings of, the, of what came out about this. And can you first tell us why you decided to write now a book about it and what is the main... What's the main insight from the book? So I was uh, doing this research about the Maidan massacre since it started. I was watching it live uh, when I uh, was doing research about Maidan in Ukraine. And since I specialize in political violence, so for me this was a natural uh, conflict to study. And I was stunned to see such event uh, taking place live on live television, which was reported. And then I noticed that there were videos which were broadcast live, like live streams of this massacre, they disappeared. Like Radio Liberty, which is funded by US Congress, they had live stream. I was watching on their website, they have a collection of four live streams. And after day after, next day, basically, they disappeared. And this for me was very strange to see because they kept all other days of you know, Maidan protest, but the most important one disappeared. And this is why I think I started to do research and um, I was collecting data, all publicly available data, uh, videos, photos, uh, testimonies, audio recordings, and um, Maidan Massacre tile, which took place uh, in UK for several years. And I published uh, peer-reviewed journal articles, already three peer-reviewed uh, journal articles. And now I decided to publish a book because of this massacre, its importance of this massacre because this massacre was the event, was the conflict that started all uh, everything which happened in Ukraine basically since, including the Russian annexation, including overthrow of Yanukovych government, which was directly related to the massacre because he was blamed for this mass murder. Even so, even Maidan massacre trial recently uh, issued a verdict in which, there, it, in which it stated that there was no evidence that Yanukovych issued any order to massacre Maidan protesters. So there is no evidence. And this is what I found myself in my research. And also this led to uh, the Russian annexation of Crimea because Obama, uh, President Obama 
after he admitted in CNN interview after the massacre in 2015, he admitted that basically Russia reacted to the overthrow of Yanukovych government, which was directly linked to the massacre of Maidan protesters and the police. And afterwards, you have also start of civil war in Donbass, which is a major conflict in Ukraine, but also had very significant uh, international importance because Russia directly intervened in support of separatists in Donbass. And, um, and, the, and there was also Western support for Ukrainian government. And then this uh, conflict, which started with Maidan massacre, conflicts in Ukraine, and conflicts between Russia and Ukraine and conflicts between Russia and the West escalated dramatically when Russia invaded Ukraine in 2022 on February 24th. So in order to understand the current war, it necessary to go to back to origins. And this is like all the conflict escalation spiral or later, ladder which started with this Maidan massacre. That's why I say this massacre changed the world and uh, not only you can, but the world. And this is uh, not exaggeration. This is actually what happened. This is why I decided to publish this and make it open access for people to read and understand what actually happened. No, you're you're absolutely right. It was a pivotal moment. And it's absolutely important to understand that this massacre was used as an excuse for uh, for the political for the political developments that came later especially the ousting of Viktor Yanukovych um, and your research finds with certainty that this was the massacre was not done by the, uh, by either Viktor Yanukovych or some of his forces it was committed by who who killed 100 people with sniper rifles on that day so actually, uh, there was a massacre of the police, which started be on February 20th, uh, on this uh, most important day of the massacre. And uh, later, it was followed by a massacre of Maidan activists or protesters. And most of, uh, like, uh, according to my research, all the evidence show, overwhelming evidence, show that uh, at least absolute majority of Maidan protesters and all the police members were killed by Maidan snipers, or snipers located in Maidan control locations, like Hotel Ukraina and Music Conservatory. And uh, this evidence includes uh, testimonies, even of uh, testimonies of uh, protesters who were wounded on the Maidan. The absolute majority of them testified during Maidan massacre trial that they were shot not by the police in front of them on the ground, uh, or by government snipers in front of them. They were shot from the back and from the side in the Hotel Ukraina and other Maidan control locations, which were controlled by Svoboda Party, far right Svoboda Party. And, yeah. and also, there were policemen also were shot from uh, such locations. So this may, is not... Ex may I just interject, because it's really important to understand, the Maidan is this big, big square, and one part of the Maidan, the police was controlling, and yes. they were trying to keep the protesters away. And the other part, they were controlled by the Maidan protesters, right? So when you say... Con controlled by Maidan, what you mean is the protesters, the part that they held, and they were shot from the back. From, yes, exactly. From places that were not controlled by the police. Uh, yes, and this is uh, also very important because so far right Svoboda Party admitted before the massacre that they took this uh, Hotel Ukina under their control. And so it was controlled, and there are like videos showing that they were in charge of uh, control of access to um, to this hotel during the massacre. No, and uh, Svoboda deputies actually had uh, uh, meetings there during the Maidan massacre. They live in this hotel, Ukraina, on and in two rooms which were occupied by far right uh, deputies from uh, or members of the parliament from Svoboda. They were Maidan snipers. In one room, they were filmed by BBC uh, shooting into BBC television crew and Maidan protesters. And another room, which was not mentioned by um, by the Western media, but actually was reported by BBC journalists, the same BBC journalist who was shot at by snipers. And he said that he saw that one of the snipers was wearing a green style, uh, green uh, helmet, which was uh, used by Maidan protesters. So this was a room occupied by um, Deputy Svoboda uh, Party, one of the leaders of Svoboda Party. Another room of Hotel Ukraine, in which were snipers, according to this testimony of a BBC journalist, um, which was uh, who was quoted in Ukrainian media, actually uh, he said that when he went to this floor, 11th floor of the Hotel Ukraine, he saw a note saying uh, not to go to room of 11 
zero seven on this floor because there were snipers shooting from this hotel. And later he said, and he filmed in the video uh, that Maidan activists went to this room to try to search for snipers. And so, and this room was occupied by a uh, far right uh, uh, Maidan um, and Suboda party member and activist and deputy of the parliament, uh, Irina Farion. And she was recently assassinated in Lviv by a neo Nazi um, who did not like that he, uh, again, uh, kind of uh, went against neo Nazi led Azov uh, uh, regiment and Azov movement in Ukraine. So, this is, I think, uh, kind of quite a uh, revealing. And in addition to this, there uh, are like uh, not only like uh, testimonies of Maidan activists, there are like more than uh, 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 100 testimonies of uh, persecution witnesses and uh, and uh, defense witnesses of Maidan massacre trial who testified the same that they were that they saw snipers in Hotel Ukina and other Maidan control locations, or that they testified that uh, they received the government snipers received order to try to locate the snipers who were shooting both police and protesters. In addition to this, there are like testimonies, publicly available testimonies of several hundred eyewitnesses who testified. Also in media, social media, they saw snipers there, that these snipers were located in Hotel Ukraina. And uh, there are like videos of snipers in Hotel Ukraina during Maidan massacre, in particular from a far right uh, link um, group of um, Maidan protesters who were a group of snipers. And um, a few of them admitted actually shooting police and killing police. And nobody is arrested of them. Nobody is charged with murder. Even so, they confessed in Ukrainian media that they shot and killed police. Nobody is charged with their murder. And they are linked to far right um, kind of uh, organizations, the right sector and so on. In addition to this, they are like uh, uh, ballistic expert and medical examination by government experts who pointed that protesters were shot from the back and from the side and from very vertical steep direction which is consistent with Hotel Ukina and other uh, medical control locations and not consistent with with this uh, with this um, kind of um, with frontal uh, shooting and uh, finally I can say that there are also admissions by uh, uh, 14 Maidan snipers who, who admitted that they shot Maidan protesters or received orders to shoot both Maidan protesters and the police. So I all mention this, all is mentioned in Maidan, in my book, which was just published. Yes, and it, it, it's, it, you worked a lot on all of these details and it's pretty clear that also the judicial trials and the, 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 the work that happened in Ukraine points toward exactly this conclusion that it was not the uh, official forces of Yanukovych who shot it was uh, the shots came from parts of the of the prote of, of the protesting group. But the question then is, why did uh, why did far right elements in the protest group shoot their own protest? Why did they shoot on their own people and on the police? And who gave the order for this to happen? And this is also I explain this in my book. Uh, this is like rational explanation because. Kind of, it was a way to kind of uh, to implicate the government in the Maidan massacre in order to restore this government because uh, Yanukovych government uh, was motivated by a kind of uh, basically money. They wanted to stay in power, enrich themselves, and they were not interested in losing power because if you would start violence, it was very easy that he would lose uh, lose uh, his power. And so for he, he basically never gave order to open. Uh, fire on Maidan protesters for this reason. And that's why opposition, uh, Maidan, op Maidan opposition was waiting, and including far right opposition were waiting and trying to provoke government forces. And uh, this did not lead to government forces using, uh, using uh, weapons against um, uh, this Maidan snipers and or Maidan uh, far right who tried to provoke such violence. And this is why uh, they decided to kind of uh, resort to such uh, false flag um, uh, operation of was like massacre in order to implicate government forces basically by uh, covertly uh, shooting their own uh, members of Maidan opposition who did not suspect that they were sh shot and did not expect obviously that they would be shot by their own and and uh, in order specifically to blame um, uh, government forces and to blame Yanukovych and this is what they did this was successful force like operation in order to implicate uh, government forces and this is I also explain this based on rational choice theory and based on the barbarian theory of uh, of rational action and based on uh, uh, state repression backfire theory which is uh, consistent this is why 
kind of uh, kind of this was operation was undertaken, but actually who gave order? There are like testimonies of some of the Georgian uh, uh, um, military members, ex-military members, who said in various interviews in uh, Italian media, in uh, Macedonian media, in uh, U.S. Uh, documentary, in Israeli documentary, in other interviews, and also testified to Maidan massacre trial. That um, that actually uh, they receive orders to massacre both Maidan uh, police and protesters, specifically to provoke this um, violence and to provoke um, resentment against government and to restore government. From uh, they receive such order from uh, Maidan opposition leaders. So they name such Maidan opposition leaders, uh, who became uh, one of them became head of Ukrainian parliament, and he actually was uh, head of Maidan self defense uh, force. And before this, he was um, in the 1990s, he was head of a neo Nazi party, which was called Social National Party, which is kind of just another version of the name of a kind of, of National Socialist Party. And this is kind of became later Svoboda Party. And uh, he was head also of Party of the Ukraine organization, which was part of the military branch of this party, which became a later right sector and now became a Azov basically movement. So this is all the connection. And including Azov movement, they were also located in one of the buildings in so-called um, Kosatsky Hotel building on Maidan, which was controlled by Azov or a sector, and uh, specifically by this um, Patriot of Ukraine, which later became Azov. And they also uh, in this building there was also snipers located and shooting both Maidan protesters and police. And they also shot Western journalists, like German journalists, and and um, and uh, also shot at um, at the. Uh, uh, um, British journalists, I mentioned, and Russian journalists and Polish journalists, and uh, there were a report that there was order also to shoot, um, uh, to kill one of uh, journalists, specifically also to provoke a kind of um, backlash in the West, in the Western media, and uh, and one of the uh, people who said this uh, was, uh, he referred to this testimony of the Georgians, and he said this was order from uh, then uh, former president of Georgia, who also was on Maidan, and supported Maidan protesters. And uh, in addition to this, uh, I think I found and quoted in my book, uh, interviews with two leaders of Farai Svoboda, who said in uh, their interviews, which were published by Ukrainian uh, journalists, Ukrainian uh, journalists, and they said uh, in these interviews, these two leaders of Farai Svoboda, that um, they met with some Western representative before massacre, and this Western representative told them and other Maidan leaders that a few protesters kill is not enough. For Western governments to uh, change their support or recognition of Yanukovych government, they said that uh, Western uh, Western governments would turn on Yanukovych government only if there would be um, 100 protesters killed. So this was like a trading. They said like 20, 20 killed uh, is not enough. So 10 is not enough. Five is not enough. 100, they agree, 100 would be enough because this is a large number to blame the government, and and, and this is exactly what happened. Uh, there was immediately on the day of the massacre, there was a declaration from Maidan, uh, by Maidan opposition leaders and, um, and um, later by media, that there was how many hundred killed, even so the number of killed protesters was less than 100, they included uh, protesters who died from uh, natural causes like heart attack, or were killed, uh, some of them were killed in, uh, just uh, in um, outside of Maidan. For, uh, not for any kind of uh, political related reasons, and one committed suicide, but, uh, and another died just from poisoning, uh, from a um, shock, uh, because of uh, um, uh, uh, of uh, uh, just uh, for medical reasons again, and they were included as uh, in this uh, having hundred, and there were also uh, seventeen uh, policemen killed, and some of them also were included in this uh, having hundred, even so there were police members killed by <laughs> Maidan opposition. So this is kind of quite uh, unbelievable, just uh, what happened, and, and I think this is a reason um, why. Uh, this massacre was undertaken, but it's still, I think, there is no investigation. Uh, actually, leaders of Maidan opposition were not interviewed even uh, about this. They uh, were not uh, even uh, required to testify for Maidan massacre uh, trial, or they were not required to testify even for investigation. So, uh, again, uh, a lot of details still need to be researched, but I think it's clear that beyond any doubt that Maidan opposition was the one, and Maidan opposition leaders, including uh, far right, and oligarchic elements of Maidan leadership were involved in this massacre. And uh, very likely Georgian also snipers and maybe linked to the former uh, president of uh, Georgia, um, uh, Mikhail Saakashvili, who went to Ukraine and became a member later of Ukrainian government, along with other members of his government. And the research now is clear 
nobody has been punished for this for the for this uh, massacre and the um the western official who that western official was we don't know yet right but yes. if we can talk about the political situation um not just the forensics the what what you're showing is that you had ultra right wing neo nazi elements that were willing to use deadly force against all sides in order to provoke a political upheaval and an overthrow of the government and that worked um but at the same time we have these these are internal ukrainian internal forces right you uh, internal ultra violent actors but there seems to be a link to the outside as well right some western officials and you also said that uh radio liberty and so on they took down a couple of unflattering streams and we know how bbc and other um western media then reported about this event and were very pivotal in creating the narrative that the evil Yanukovych government shot at defenseless protesters. And that was for many years the narrative. And even now, probably inside Ukraine and outside, it is a very strong narrative to justify the overthrow of a democratically elected government. Um, this connection to the outside, how do you what do you know about who was involved in creating the narrative? The thing is, in Western media uh, was a very kind of uh, plays a very important role in this misrepresentation of Maidan massacre, and this misrepresentation, I think, is, even is more important than what happened with uh, with uh, Iraq war when they falsely claimed that uh, there was uh, presence of uh, uh, weapons of mass destruction in order to justify invasion of Iraq, which was illegal under international law, but uh, under false pretense. I think the same. Happen or similar ha situation happen in Ukraine. Basically, media and I study also media coverage of Ukraine and other countries. So basically, Western media they did not uh, report actually facts. They reported what uh, basically narrative was promoted by the Western government. So this is called indexing theory of political communication. So media just reflects uh, media coverage reflects not what actually going on in terms of factual developments, but uh, they report what is um, kind of their own government and um, or members of opposition would basically kind of uh, present um, uh, chicken about what uh, was taking place. So they reported basically what uh, uh, U.S. government said, what um, German government or British government uh, said, and all these governments basically immediately blame. Uh, uh, Yanukovych uh, and his uh, forces for the Maidan massacre, they set in sanctions, even so there was no investigation, and, uh, and even so almost definitely they knew actually who was responsible. And this is quite also kind of a revealing because I think the behavior of Western governments is quite revealing because from the start they um, kind of, uh, they claim that there was uh, that there was involvement of um, Yanukovych government in order to justify this overthrow. They supported this overthrow from uh, day one. Uh, even so, there was agreement signed between Yanukovych and uh, representatives of um, of uh, France, French um, uh, foreign minister, um, German foreign minister, and Polish foreign minister. And uh, there was uh, oppos and uh, there was agreement signed on February twenty first after the Medan massacre with um, presence of this uh, foreign ministers of European Union. Uh, member countries and also Maidan opposition leaders and Yanukovych. And uh, they signed an agreement which said basically that Yanukovych agreed to early elections and uh, he agreed to withdraw forces of uh, government forces from Maidan, uh, from downtown area of Ukraine, uh, of uh, Ukrainian capital. And uh, Maidan opposition also agreed to kind of disarm and, uh, and they agreed basically that there would be an investigation of Maidan massacre conducted by uh, um, uh, kind of uh, Ukrainian government uh, with involvement of uh, Council of Europe. And all this agreement was broken next day, basically, even uh, not a full day in the evening of uh, February 21st. There were assassination attempts against Yanukovych, and he fled Kyiv uh, because there were assassination attempts involving, uh, involving uh, far right opposition. The testimonies at the uh, prison trial in Ukraine that actually uh, by his bodyguards, by uh, um, other eyewitnesses, 
uh, who said that there were uh, uh, Yanukovych motorcade was uh, targeted, and later he was um, uh, there was attempt to assassinate him in Kharkiv when he moved to Kharkiv on February 22nd, and uh, there was also order from new Maidan leadership uh, to shut down helicopters in which Yanukovych was flying from uh, Kiev to Kharkiv and then, then from Kharkiv to Donetsk. On after the Maidan massacre. So in this case, again, Western governments immediately recognize um, this new government. Even so, election of um, and dismissal of Yanukovych was illegal under Ukrainian constitution. It was completely illegal, and it was only justified by his um, kind of by his responsibility for this massacre. Even so, this uh, he was not responsible. And actually, people who led this vote. One of the leaders, actually, of the parliament, who was deputy speaker of the parliament, who actually was in charge of, of uh, became in charge of the parliament because they removed leadership, which was uh, linked to Yanukovych and to Communist Party from um, parliament uh, leadership, and they became in charge of the parliament himself. Uh, so, and this, uh, the same leader, he was filmed by, um, also by German television and by other uh, media in Hotel Ukraina along with snipers from this far-right link group, group in uh, near the room of uh, ZDF television channel of Germany, public television, in which snipers were shooting uh, from, the, uh, from the television uh, room, um, from the room which was occupied by uh, German television, they were shooting into the direction of Maidan protesters. And this was filmed <laughs> by uh, even by German television, again, and uh, they did not show this film, and it was only uh, shown by, uh, again, uh, at the Maidan massacre trial without any sound, because uh, there were snipers shooting from their room, basically. So the uh, sound basically disappeared from Miracles for some reason, and I think it's a very obvious reason why they did not show this uh, this uh, uh, kind of uh, basically one hour uh, and half uh, one and a half hour video of Maidan massacre because uh, snipers were shooting from Hotel Ukina, including a room which was occupied by German television. So this is like cover up taking place with a uh, presence of um, Western media and Western media play. Uh, a role in this, the Western governments play a role in this, and uh, they uh, accepted overthrow of Yanukovych, even so it was illegal, and uh, and uh, they knew, actually, a lot of them knew that actually what was going on, but it was politically um, not convenient to kind of admit this, so they blame, um, kind of, uh, they blame uh, Yanukovych government, and even uh, Biden, uh, when he gave interview, he gave speech, actually, uh, at the Ukrainian parliament in 2015, he stated that there were snipers shooting Maidan protesters, and Blinken, uh, U.S. Secretary of State, also said there were snipers shooting uh, Maidan protesters from uh, rooftops. And the same was said by Biden. And now government investigation said there were no such snipers located, there were no snipers shooting. Uh, this is like a kind of propaganda now. Now say this is like snipers are propaganda because they found that government snipers were not responsible for massacre. They found that even they did not shot any uh, bullet kind of um, um, as boost snipers and they join new government. So they had to blame kind of kind of uh, basically uh, kind of <laughs> this um, a claim that this was disinformation, propaganda to say that there were snipers on Maidan, because they uh, they claim that uh, that um, uh, Berkut police was responsible for the massacre, and uh, and Western media they did not kind of report this, so there were no reports from um, from Maidan massacre uh, trial, all these revelations which I uh, collected in the videos, like one hour long video of testimonies of Maidan activists about Maidan snipers. Again, they are on my website. They are appendixes to my book. Again, and uh, no media reported this. This is like total cover up. And, and media, no, they knew this. Uh, journalists follow me. They know about my studies. They know about videos, but they decided not to report this. And this is quite unbelievable. Also, kind of, um, uh, this is, uh, I think, uh, quite uh, astounding to see such kind of will, decept kind of deception, which is done by the top media, including like CNN. I had video which I obtained from CNN and the CNN uh, crew, television crew. Uh, has a raw footage of um, of Maidan massacre starting uh, in the morning of um, February 20th. They film a group of Maidan activists linked to this far right uh, Svoboda party and uh, right sector going to Maidan in front of Maidan stage and start with like with their uh, firearms and starting shooting into police. So this is how Ma Maidan massacre started. And this footage I obtained from CNN. Um, they wanted to me to charge uh, like something like five hundred dollars for for uh, uh, for half a minute. Kind of, so I cannot afford this money. So I just, um, but I use this in my research, and so and this is like I included some um, some brief segments of these videos in my uh, video appendix, and so this is actually uh, this is footage which was uh, obtained by CNN. They never shown this 
they never broadcast this. Even so, they had snipers, Madame Snipers shooting police. And also, they sent in film uh, Madame Snipers from Hotel Lukina, which uh, shooting into, uh, into uh, Madame Protesters, they never saw this again. So this is, I think, uh, quite unbelievable to see. It is unbelievable. Uh, it, it just shows that also in a liberal, Western, open society where uh, media is not directly controlled, that some form of working together starts happening between these different institutions.